Is Australia heading for a recession? Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein or your trade cup of coffee and uh, let's have a look at this article which is, well, warning us to brace for a recession, everyone. Now, before we have a look at this, let's just jump through and bring up the definition of a recession because, well, there's a lot of fear out there and... I mean, fear gets the views, everyone. You're, you're concerned about the future, which is an evolutionary response. You're going to be attracted to information that hopefully can help you prepare. But let's have a look. So, a period of temporary economic decline during which trade and industrial activity are reduced, generally identified by a fall in GDP in two successive quarters. Now, GDP isn't necessarily the best measure of economic activity, everyone, but it's it's what we're using and it's the basis of this definition. Now, you can see here, this is the last recession Australia had. Probably not the last recession Australia had to have. That was another one. <laughs> Let me know in the chat if you're old enough to remember that one. But you can see here, we had two quarters of quite drastic reduction in GDP. But since then, it's been going, it's still been growing, but it's been declining. So you need to have two quarters of falls of GDP. They were hoping they may just scrape out of it because uh, in that recession uh, because of the government, uh, let's just say, pouring a lot of money on the economy. Now, we need to remember, when we had this recession, this was created, well, because of the whole world pretty much turning the economy on and off again, and uh, government interventions and lockdowns. Now, Starting everything up after you've turned it on and off isn't that easy, we're finding. There's lots of supply delays, there's lots of shipping delays, there, there's logistical issues getting businesses up and running again. And with so much you know, money print to go brewer, there's a lot of demand, particularly we've seen it here in Australia. Well, we've seen it with the government debt skyrocketing and how they came to the rescue with, oh, I'm not keeping zombie company lives this time, with just juicing up the housing market and how that's affected construction, guys. So are we facing another recession? Perhaps, perhaps. And Now, recessions are not bad things. I know we're programmed to think they're bad, but if you, you know, go on a business, and you know what, I'll, uh, I'll full screen this one. If you go on a business and you make a wrong investment, you need to go through tough times maybe to get slapped in the face to learn the lesson from that. If, if they're bad businesses with bad practices that are running inefficiently, they need to be outcompeted. We need to have an opportunity for the young, nimble, innovative businesses to come in and provide new and better services. And you will need some creative destruction in the economy. Now, I know it's harsh. I know, one, I know no one likes to hear it, but... We've all been through tough times in our lives. Most of us have. The majority of you as the channels of the channel are, you know, we're going 35 plus. So you've been through life. So you should know that it's not the end. If you, you know, business is struggling or you have to rebrand or refresh or maybe even change entire careers. Sometimes that's what you need to do. I'm hoping, I'm hoping the tough times that people are facing now particularly those that have gotten insane mortgages as interest rates grow up or go up, it's going to encourage some people to prepare a bit better, to manage their finances a bit better, and to be a little bit more sensible. And as I've said many times before, I think we're going to see, well, the impact of rising rates on discretionary spending. I've been thinking about that now. How many of these first home buyers who have just borrowed, who've scraped everything together they had, how many of whom you think were actually contributing that much to discretionary spending how many do you think were just scraping by every penny they could just to get a deposit to get in will their reduction in discretionary spending be that much we'll have to see it's probably gonna be less because they're not saving and renting so maybe they'll be better off but let's jump back with that in mind let's have a look at uh, fears of a impending recession here in australia now we've been through two recessions the last one in 2020, and the one before that when I was a child. That was when my family and I, we moved from Victoria up to Queensland. We were in the construction game. My father had a building business, so they came to Queensland. I think a lot of people did that then too. 
So, Australia braces for a week of economic carnage as ominous clouds hang over the global economy. There are now fears that w- the world is teetering on the brink of a recession after horror new data from the US sent chills around the globe. And this is written by Ben Graham on news.com.au. There are now fears the world is teetering on the brink of a global recession after horror new inflation data from the US has sent a chill through stock markets around the globe. And let's see what I have up here at the left. This is just showing you shipping data that we were discussing. I think it's interesting to see the amount of shipping. You know, the backlog isn't as bad as it once was in the in China, but we're a very connected world. So economic issues in the US, it's just going to flow through it everywhere. Look at what we've got going on over here. What are these? Pleasure crafts. Oh, the, there you go. Are these cruisers? A cru- the cruise ship's going back again. Well, that's a sign of things going back to normal, isn't it? So, Australians who own stocks are probably glad. It's a public holiday today and the markets are closed after a difficult enough week last week. Yes, I've noticed uh, shares are, are going down. Fortunately, I'm, I'm quite diverse in my portfolio that you know, one or two going down drastically isn't going to hurt me that much, but I am, you know, I'm in the red on some investments. Let's have a look here, though. We'll jump to trading economics, guys. And let's look at some commodity prices. We can see gold is at 18.75, silver is at 21.78. So gold is meant to be a traditional hedge against inflation. It's not really doing much. And well, the big news as well, coin market cap, guys. <laughs> Bitcoin is under 26,000. Oh, sorry, under 27,000. There's 26 at the beginning. So it's... It's falling. It's not doing too well. We'll have to see if there's a bottom to this market, guys. Ethereum, under 1,500. There you go. So what are the, the hedges? You know, even property's falling, guys. Aussie gold is falling. But the pain is set to get even worse for the Australian economy after the US recorded the highest rate of inflation since 81, stoking fears the global economy is slowly falling into a recession. While there may be a recess for Australia's pain because of the Queen's birthday holiday today, it is anticipated the markets will be hammered in the days that follow. Investors Mutual Portfolio Manager manager Daniel Moore told the Australian he expects significant falls when the market reopens this week. The US market was down 2.73% on Friday, so the Australian futures are currently down 1.6%, and if you're looking at the sector breakdown, nearly all sectors were down on fears higher inflation will lead to higher interest rates, which will cause a recession, said Mr. Moore, who looks after a $5 billion funds. Now, if this happens, if we have a recession, what's the Fed going to do? How are they going to address it? Same thing here. Will rates go back down again? And will QE start again? Are they stuck in this trap now? Pretty much forever, everyone. Will they let it will they let it adjust or will they intervene? You, you tell me what you think. Because remember, they can kick the can down the road pretty uh, much longer than many anticipated. The economic outlook is pretty tough. With rising inflation and rising interest rates, investors are generally cautious and there's a preference towards companies with more resilient earnings in tougher economic conditions. Things were already looking sketchy on the Australian Stock Exchange after a week that saw a higher-than-expected cash rate rise. It depends on who you're talking to. Trading economics anticipated a a 60 basis point rise. As there's little relief in sight, as many economists expect the RBA to bump up interest rates by 50 basis points at the next meeting in July, following a surprise 50 basis points this hike. Why are we facing a recession? While inflation and interest rates are on the rise, here in Australia, things look much worse than the US. Its red-hot red inflation rise is showing few signs of cooling, putting its Federal Reserve on track to continue its aggressive interest rate increases to help cool high prices that are challenging Joe Biden's presidency. I mean, this is... How much of this inflation is supply-side? And stupid Biden policy. I mean, think about it. The hopeful signs of relief for American families, 
did not materialize in May as consumer prices hit a new four-decade high, rising 8.6%, and topping what economists thought was the peak in March. With Russia's war on Ukraine continuing to pressure global fuel and food prices, and amid ongoing supply chain uncertainties due to COVID-19 lockdowns in Asia, analysts now say the expected easing in inflation pressures will take much longer to materialize. The U.S. Central Bank already had signaled plans for more big increases in the benchmark borrowing rate this week and next month, but chances are rising that the Fed might have to be even more aggressive, which increases the risk the economy might tip into recession. The latest inflation report, the last major data point before the Fed's policy meeting Tuesday and Wednesday, also does as hope central banks Bankers will be able to call a ceasefire in September ahead of key congressional elections when Biden's Democrats are widely expected to suffer damaging losses. Prices continue to rise last month for a range of goods, including housing, groceries, airline fares, used cars, setting the record for multiple categories according to the Labor Department data. Energy has soared 34.6% over the past year, the fastest since September 2005 while food jumped 10.1% and the cost of fuel oil more than doubled, jumping 106.7%, the largest increase in the history of CPI, which dates back to 1931. The CPI surge raises the probability of even more aggressive Fed rate hikes to tamper down on inflationary expectations, said Mickey Levy of Bannerberg Capital Markets. If the policy-setting Federal Open Market Committee decides on a giant step, three-quarters of a point rather than the expected half-point increase, it will be the first 75 basis point rate hike since November 94. Diane Swank of Grant Thornton indicated such a move is possible. They're behind the curve and eager to catch up, she said on Twitter. Fed has to reduce demand to meet a supply-constrained world, ugly in many ways. Economists at Barclay are now calling for a 0.75% point increase, though Ray Sweet at Moody's says chances are low that Carl Healing of LBBW expects three more half-point hikes. So, well, there you go, everyone. What do you reckon, guys? Let's have a talk about this one. It all just seems like a complete and utter mess, doesn't it? The Federal Reserve just playing chase catch up to all the mess that their politicians and leaders have instigated, I don't think it's going to make much difference. It's just going to hurt a lot of people. We'll have to see. And here in Australia, you know, maybe tough times economically will spur the Chinese to intervene more in their economy and pump up their demand for natural resources, which hopefully could flow through here to Australia. We'll have to see, guys. But a recession probably is coming. The best thing is to prepare, reduce your debt, reduce your unnecessary expenses, and prepare for tough times. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one in the comments below, guys. Thank you all for watching. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and enjoy the content I find and put together here, there are a few ways you can help out. You can support us by joining us on YouTube or Patreon, or using any of our referral links, or finally, contacting us if you need an architect. Take care, everyone. Have a great day. I'll see you all in the next episode of Heiser Says. Coffee's still cheap. Then I'll worry.